So how did you become interested in gerontology? That's a question that I love to answer, but it's actually kind of odd. I grew up with my grandparents, my mother's parents, mm -hmm. living next door. Mm -hmm. And I went there every day after school. Um, they were an incredibly strong force mm -hmm. in my upbringing. And I always think back to, the, to that relationship with my grandparents, particularly my grandmother, mm -hmm. um, being really instrumental in my views that I didn't have stereo negative stereotypes about older people. I thought they were great mm -hmm. and that they were just a part of your family. Um, I'll leave it at that for now. All right, thank you. So can you describe your career trajectory as a gerontologist? And at what point in your career did you embrace gerontologists to describe yourself? Another wonderful question, because um, my graduate education is in anthropology. Mm -hmm. So um, my undergraduate, my doctorate are both in anthropology, and I was an anthropologist. Mm -hmm. But from the very, very beginning, I was always, always interested in aging and older adults. Mm -hmm. And my perspective was that anthropological cross-cultural perspective mm -hmm. of how can we understand aging in our culture, in our society, mm -hmm. from what we can learn from other cultures and that comparative perspective. Mm -hmm. So I began as an anthropologist mm -hmm. interested in aging. Mm -hmm. um, and there really was a choice to be made. A lot of my colleagues have stayed in anthropology. They go to the American Anthropological Association meeting annually. And the meetings always overlap. Mm -hmm. So it truly was a choice yeah. that had to be made. For a few years, I would try to get to both conferences. Mm -hmm. And then when a choice needed to be made, and I'd have to think a little bit more about what year that was. It was probably mid-'80s that I made the decision, late 80s, to start coming to the GSA instead of the AAA. And that was when I realized that I was making uh, a commitment in my own mind and that I was a gerontologist. I was teaching gerontology. I'd been hired to, to build and develop a gerontology program. And I always describe myself as an anthropological gerontologist. Mm -hmm. But then, late 80s or 90-ish, I was a gerontologist. Wow. A long time already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell, did you have like uh, female mentors who impacted your move into gerontology? Mm -hmm. And who are these people? Interesting. Um, one of my primary me mentors was, in fact, an anthropologist. So Sylvia Foreman was my dissertation advisor. Uh, she did not have interest or experience in aging herself, but she had mentored two people before me who were interested in gerontology and was very open to the idea of helping me you know, do my dissertation and go in that direction. Um, it, it was a very different time, so that there really weren't very many women or otherwise, but certainly women gerontologists. I actually consider Millie Seltzer one of my strongest mentors. It was at a distance, but we developed um, a relationship that was very important to me. Mm -hmm. When I was teaching out in Minnesota in my first position, we had her in to do a self-study, you know, an outside reviewer. And um, she was very open, very honest with me, very supportive, but also said, you have to publish more. It doesn't matter how much you're teaching and that you're running a gerontology program. If you've developed community involvement, and you know, all of that's not going to matter. If you don't publish, you're never going to be able to move on. Mm -hmm. So Millie was a, a very strong mentor. Um, and really, at a gerontology Interestingly enough, she was probably my strongest. Mm -hmm. And what do you think uh, is a unique feature in being a woman gerontologist? It's hmm. an interesting question. Uh, in fact, gerontology is one field where there are a lot of mm -hmm. women um, who, who are high up in the, in the field. Mm -hmm. um, as I've observed over the years, very often in a lot of fields, there are a lot of women and they're the worker bees, oh, yeah. um, you know, and that the few men become the leaders in the leadership, and that's not the case mm -hmm. in gerontology. I do believe in gerontology that there always have been, um, you know, and Ethel Shanus, Millie, you know, there, there have always been important um, women leadership in the field of gerontology, and I think that that's continued and, and in fact, increased. Mm -hmm. well, that's good to hear that. 
So how can you like you know uh, describe or tell us of, about something um, has being um, transologist interacted with your own personal aging mm. experience? That is a fascinating question for me mm. to answer at this point in time. Yes, um, and I've been thinking about it quite a lot. I've actually um, decided to retire and announced my retirement at the end of this spring semester. And um, I've been doing my uh, observations as I tell people about my retirement and I watch their reactions. I sit every evening and I keep saying that I'm going to have to write notes because I'm seeing the patterns and the themes and I'm fascinated by the fact that even gerontologists mm -hmm. very often will go, oh, what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Mm -hmm. That you know, there is no life other than the academic life because when we lead it it's mm -hmm. so all-encompassing. Um, so it's very, very interesting for me. I actually did some research on retirement a number of years ago about the pushes and the polls. Mm -hmm. um, both you know, the family push and pull, the professional push and pull. So I've been very aware of it as I've been experiencing it and I find myself chuckling to myself quite a lot and, and kind of amazed at other times. So you know, as gerontologists we know quite a lot about aging but you know what? It's really a surprise when you start experiencing it yourself. The physical changes you know, the, the uh, having to hold on when you're walking up and down stairs, um, the stretching I had to do before I sat down because I've been sitting so much, um, it, it kind of catches up with you. And I think that we as gerontologists need to do a better job of being more introspective about it, um, sharing it with people, talking with people about it, and um, learning from it. I, I think that ultimately I very well could write mm -hmm. about this experience of retirement from the perspective of other people's mm -hmm. reactions and feedback because mm -hmm. it's everything from mm -hmm. the oh my god what are you going to do which I just laughed and go whatever I want to and nothing that I don't want to are you kidding me? <laughs> but to the people who go oh yay congratulations and embrace it and understand you know, the, the, the opportunity for, for more balance mm -hmm. um, as, as you move forward. So, so, I am just curious, so how do you respond to these realizations now? Mm -hmm. In terms of like, you know, uh, you have this like knowledge about information about the aging experience and trying to resolve it, it that you are like experiencing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I find myself thinking about it a lot, mm -hmm. talking with friends and my husband about it mm -hmm. and just processing it. I'm an anthropologist. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, this is all data, mm -hmm. um, and I find myself sitting and thinking about it and analyzing the themes. I mean, I'm seeing the patterns <laughs> in people's reactions, and even here, um, here we are at the Agi conference, and um, we went out the other night for dinner with some of my colleagues and friends to celebrate both me getting the Millie Seltzer recognition, but also the fact that that I'm about to retire and. Sadly enough, gerontologists react the same way that the larger academic population does. Um, and, and I'm speaking very freely that I think that a lot of people are afraid to retire. Um, and I'm kind of surprised by it. I, I won't use the word amused, it, it's more of concern. Um, that, that the people don't find ways to find the balance in their lives mm -hmm. all the way through mm -hmm. because then they wouldn't be worried about well what am I going to do next because all I've ever done is teach and do research and, and work 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 so for me it's um, been very important that value of balance that I've always tried to maintain and now I just see this aging experience as shifting the balance. Mm -hmm. People started using the words rewired, mm -hmm. re what's, and you know, everybody's come up with all these cutesy, fancy words, and I'm just saying, I'm retiring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yes, of course there will be other things, mm -hmm. um, but th this aging experience is really, really fascinating because it kind of sneaks up on you. Mm 
<laughs> really does. Mm -hmm. You know, all of a sudden I say, oh, I guess I am not quite as physically able. So yeah, let's go hiking, but yeah, let's not plan on going you know, four miles straight up the, the mountain. So you know, it sneaks up on you. It's a gradual process. Um, and it's fascinating. It really is fascinating to me experiencing it, experiencing it, teaching about it, learning about it, all, all at the same time. And for my final question is, the Wiggle Project focuses on the legacies of older women gerontologists. So within that framework, is there anything else you would like us to know and share? How lovely it is to think of myself as an older woman <laughs> gerontologist. I mean, it, it is, it's all just fascinating. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I spend time with you and I don't feel any different. Mm -hmm. Then I look in the mirror and go, whoa, yeah, the gray sure has come in, hasn't it? And you, you realize slowly and gradually um, that life course perspective is really very valuable because it's so gradual. And, you know, there are no markers along the road. I mean, there's the, oh, wow, you turned 50. Yes, my God, now I turned 60. But it's just, it's gradual. It's so individual. Um, and that's what I'm looking forward to hearing back from the results of this project is, you know, I know you're looking for the patterns, but I'm looking, I'm, I'm really very curious about the individuality. Um, and that's what I've been struck by over these last few months as I've declared my retirement, I'm living this pre-retirement um, phase, and everybody has to do it on their own, on their own time, in their own way. And I suppose that would probably be um, my, my parting message.